What's going on my friends? Today let's take a look at quite possibly the coolest homage I've ever purchased. This is from a brand called Thorn, which falls under the Watch Dive umbrella. And Watch Dive is the parent company of San Martin, Heimdaller, Steel Dive, Tactical Frog, etc, etc. So basically what I'm saying is Thorn comes from a proven watch group and I was confident in trying out this brand despite never having heard of them before. I actually discovered Thorn completely by accident from a recommendation on Amazon and the steel bezel hypnotized me into ordering it. Speaking of steel bezels, let's do the wrist shot. Today I'm rocking the Tudor Black Bay Steelmaster, which is easily one of my all-time favorite watches, so you can understand why I like this Thorn so much. This style of monochromatic badassery is what I live for in watch collecting. Back to the Thorn, this is one of those watches that I had to try out. Even though I own the original Tudor that it is copying, curiosity got the better of me and I wanted to see how it stacked up to it. So without further ado, let's get right into the review. Starting off with price, I ordered this on Amazon for $159, which I personally think is great. Of course, everyone's got their different standards and comfort levels, but for me, I have no complaints here. I don't feel like I'm getting ripped off in the slightest. For dimensions, there they are on the screen. They are pretty much identical to the Black Bay 58, which many consider to be a perfectly sized watch. So to that end, I think Thorn really knocked it out of the park. It wears beautifully on my 7.75 inch wrist, and any of the size complaints I had on my Black Bay are non-existent on this Thorn. For some general info, the watch is stainless steel throughout the entirety of the case and bracelet. At the top, there is a 120 click unidirectional bezel surrounding a domed sapphire crystal. Underneath that, we've got what appears to be painted indices with C3 Superluminova applied on all of them. On the side, we've got a screw down crown and on the bottom, a screw down case back. All of this is going to give us 200 meters of water resistance and the engine is our beloved NH35, which is going to give us around 41 hours of power reserve. Here is the loom shot, which I think speaks for itself. I mean, how crazy is this? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Chinese homage brands are at the very top and everyone else needs to take notes. There is no comparison when we're talking about the brightness, clarity, and glow time. This loom is really a 10 out of 10. The bezel is also a win. When I first unboxed the watch, there was a sticking point. However, over time it has corrected itself and rotates smoothly across all 120 clicks. The coined edge provides a good gripping surface, so it's easy to operate and there is zero back plate, which is quite impressive for a watch in this price range. The loomed pip allows for effective use of the bezel in the dark, and it is pleasing to see form and function work together here. The dial is pretty standard dive watch affair. I think of all the components of this watch, this might be what I consider its weakest attribute, but there's nothing objectively wrong with it. I actually very much like the Thorn logo as it does remind me of the classic Tudor Rose without being a blatant copy. And the name Thorn itself just looks kind of cool. The exploration road text at the bottom is a little cheesy, but all I have to say to that is keep an open mind and find joy in the cheesiness of it all. The main thing that I don't like about the dial is just how green the indices are. I would have preferred white or old radium colored indices, and the putrid green color just makes it look like those cheap glow-in-the-dark wall stickers from back in the day. Is it going to affect your ability to enjoy the watch? Not at all. This is just a subjective opinion that I have on it, and I guess the benefit of the outstanding loom outweighs the color of the indices. The crown is nothing to write home about, but just like the dial, it works and there's nothing objectively wrong with it. The coined edge makes it easy to grab and the threading is done well. There is a little wobble, but nothing out of the ordinary and standard for a $150 watch. Moving down to the case back, not much to see here, but I really like the professional brush look that makes this watch a no frills working watch. The bracelet copies the faux rivet style of the Tudor Black Bay, and that's something you're either going to love or hate. I don't mind it, but what I do mind is the fact that the last link next to the clasp does not have any rivets, making it seem like they ran out of riveted links and went to the spare parts bin to throw something on there. It's not a big deal, but to me it interrupts the flow of the bracelet. Aside from that, there's a dual push button mill deployment clasp and solid end links, so all the ingredients for a solid bracelet. 
The finishing speaks to my heart as we have a fully brushed case. There's minimal mirror polishing on the beveled edges, but that only serves to complement the brush finishing and not detract from the rugged style of the watch. Even the case sides are brushed, which is fantastic. The Tudor Black Bay has polished sides, and that was something I always hated. Overall, I gotta say I think this watch is a winner. There are some things about it that I wish were implemented on my Tudor, and I'm not even ashamed to admit it. Firstly, I never understood why Tudor did not make a Black Bay 58 version of the Steelmaster. I would have loved a 39mm diameter and 12mm thick version of it, and I was so disappointed that it never happened. This thorn has given me the opportunity to experience that, sort of, and that's awesome. Secondly, the completely brushed case is the way to do it. I love that style so much I actually brushed the case sides on my own Tudor to get rid of the mirror polish. Now with all that said, is this watch better than a Tudor? No, it is not. Firstly, this watch would not exist without Tudor, so we need to respect the original to that end. And secondly, is that even the right question to ask here? Would it make sense to try and force a $150 watch into being better than a $4,000 watch? I don't think so. I don't think that's a relevant comparison, and I don't think it's even something to consider. What I think we should focus on is how this watch stands on its own merits. Without even considering the price tag, what we have is an automatic watch with a proven movement, a sapphire crystal, solid case construction with screw down everything, and a perfectly respectable fit and finish. You tell me if this is a good watch on its own, because that's really the only person that's going to be able to tell you if it is or not. Personally, I'm happy with it and have no hesitation recommending it. But that's all I have to say for now. I hope I was able to show you some insight on a new watch and perhaps assist dragging you down with me into the depths of watch addiction. I always appreciate your time watching my channel and I will catch you guys on the next episode. Bye.